it is that's got you so upset. Oh, it is just one thing after another, Mom. I called Mr. Wallace again, and he wasn't there. His secretary told me he's in Europe now. Europe? Yeah, and she doesn't even know when he's going to be back or whether he's going to check in. So I told her if he does call in, that he can reach me at, at your number. So if you get a long-distance call, that's what it's all about. I know that the call is going to come too late to do any good, though. Why? What in the world else has happened now? Oh, take a look at this. Honey, you are going to have to read it to me. My hands are just a little messy. Well, it's from Cal Jameson. It was a message left at the hospital for Jeff to call an operator in Buffalo. So that obviously means that Jameson is no longer in Canada. He's in Buffalo now. Which probably means he's on his way to Port Charles right now. Lord. Oh, Mom, what am I going to do? I, I, I can't be with Jeff every minute of the day. I mean, it could all happen before I could do anything to prevent it. Well, it's just all so... so complicated. Is that all you have to say? Well, what the hell do you want from me? Look, I don't have any solutions for you, and I'm just as upset about it as you are. I don't think so. Now Jeff is all worked up over the idea of finding Stephen Lars alive. He's willing to pay Jameson whatever he asks for this time, which could mean he could find out the whole truth. Now, I have tried my best so that Jeff wouldn't see how upset I am, because he keeps telling me that I should be so happy about finding our son. And I am absolutely terrified. I know, I know. And, honey, you're doing a much better job at hiding, and I'm very proud of you for that. Well, it gets harder and harder, because inside I am more frightened than ever. Oh, and then there is Susan and her big mouth. Well, now, I just don't see what Susan has to do with this. Well, if it hadn't been for her, Jeff wouldn't have asked Mitch to get a report on Jameson. Well, I don't see what's so wrong with that. What's wrong with it is if Mr. Williams does get that report, the police might be able to find some connection between Jameson and Stephen Lars. Well, how do you know that he has any connection with him? It is common sense that he does. Otherwise, he wouldn't have anything to sell, would he? No, I guess not. Well, it's too late for me to do anything about it now. Oh, I tried my best, though. I even went to Susan, and I told her that she'd better sidetrack Mitch, or she'd be sorry. But I don't think she paid the slightest bit of attention to me. Well, now, that was not too bright on your part, Heather. Why not? Because the more people that are exposed to this, the sooner someone is going to get awfully suspicious as to why you get so upset about it. And what makes you think that Susan could stop Mr. Williams now, even if she wanted to? Well, how she does it is her problem, but she had better find a way or else. And that is exactly what I told her. Heather, sometime you can be absolutely the... Oh, dear. Weber residence. Oh, hello, Dr. Taylor. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Yes, yes, she's sitting right here. All right. Dr. Taylor wants to talk to you. I wonder what he wants. Yeah, I've got a really terrific idea. Why don't you talk to him and find out? Hello, Dr. Taylor. Oh, oh no, when did it happen? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry to hear that. She's going to be all right, isn't she? I see. Oh, yeah, well, of, of course I can. I'd love to help out until her mother gets back. Oh, no, 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 no problem at all. Um, I'll just talk to Dr. Hardy. I'll see him later. At the, in fact, I'll call him from here. I'm sure he won't mind. Oh, yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Taylor. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know right away. Bye-bye. Diana's sister, Beth, was um, in an automobile accident. What? Oh, honey, that's terrible. Well, thank heaven she's going to be all right. But Mrs. Maynard went up to be with her, so um, Diana needs someone to help around the house and, and to take care of PJ. And you just jumped right in on that one, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I'll say I did. I mean, why wouldn't I? Because I don't like it. I mean, I do not like it one little bit, young lady. Why not? Because it worries me. Oh, everything worries you, Mom. <sighs> Hey, this is a chance to be back with my baby. I mean, you know how upset I've been since they took him away from me. Oh, how well I know it. And that's exactly the reason that you shouldn't be doing it now. I mean, with Cal Jameson closing in, the worst place in the world that you can be is at the Taylors and with Stephen Lars. And I just don't know why you cannot see that for yourself. <laughs> Are you around? Yeah, I'm over here, Sky. You by yourself? Yeah, just me. Well, you know, you'd think you'd go bananas in here, spending so much time alone. According to Bobby, I've already gone bananas. But I don't mind it. 
Gives me time to think. I've got a lot of thinking to do these days. You okay? Oh, uh, sure. And I'm going to be a lot busier than usual from now on, which is all to the good. How come? Well, because I just heard that Heather's going to be taking a leave of absence. Dr. Hardy came down here a little while ago and he asked me if I could manage on my own in the afternoons. They found someone to fill in for me in the morning until I got here. And I said I could, so I guess that's what I'll be doing now. Well, that's good, you know. I guess it's good for you to stay busy like that. You going to have to work much longer today? Mm, no. Why? Well, I was hoping that maybe I could walk you home. I'd like that. Thank you. Okay, listen, then I'll just hang around and I'll wait for you, okay? Please do. Bobby apologized to you today. Does it make you feel any better? I didn't put any stock in that apology. I think she only did it for Mrs. Hardy's benefit because she was standing right there listening. Laura, I really don't know much much about it to say anything. I mean, I don't know what Bobby said to you that got you so upset. I mean, well, what exactly did she say? I don't want to repeat that, Scotty. Uh, the point is. There are people like Bobby who are never going to forget about David Hamilton. Let me tell you something, Laura. Now, don't worry about that, no matter what, okay? Because that's behind you now. And things are only going to get better. They should. But they don't. Maybe I don't have any right to expect them to. I've caused a lot of trouble for a lot of people. And in some respects, it's only getting worse. Well, like what? Well, like I heard some people talking here in the hospital today. And they were talking about Leslie. What are you saying? That she has very few patients in the clinic because nobody trusts her as a doctor anymore. And that's my fault, too. Okay, listen, Laura. It may be like that for a little while, but it's not going to last for very long. I think what you want to do is you want to go and talk to your mother and try and cheer her up. This is your chance to help her. I think you owe her that much for everything that she's done for you. But it just keeps getting worse, Scotty. It all reminds me over and over again about what I did. The worse the problems are, the more people are going to blame me. And they're never going to forget that I started them all because I had an affair with David Hamilton and I ended up killing... Laura, stop it. Now, come on, now listen. Now, what problems are you talking about? Last night, for instance, did you know that Rick spent the night in the guest room? Well, so what? Monica told me that they were here until like half the night. Scotty, that's the first time since they've been married that they haven't shared the same room. And I could tell this morning that Leslie was really upset about it, even though she didn't want to talk about it. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you except that... Laura, people who love each other can get through anything. And when times get bad, they just gotta stick together until they get better. And they always do, Laura. They always do, somehow. Like I said, everything that's wrong between them is my fault. And it just keeps the whole thing alive. It's never gonna end for me, Scotty. It's never gonna end. This is Grant at the market on our way home. Oh, well, I'll go down the elevator with you then. Oh, okay. And then, whatever you decide, Please, I hope you have a lovely Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. <laughs> you know, you always make me feel better. Oh, I'm so glad. I do. Everything I tell you. I wonder what's keeping her. Probably last minute patient, Dr. Weber. Always happens around here. Well, I know. Do you want me to give her a call at the clinic? No, I'll wait a couple more minutes. Thank you, Anita. Well. 
We meet again, Dr. Weber. Are you leaving today? I am leaving for the holiday. Oh. I have to go home and pack, so when Alan gets out, we can just go straight to the airport. And then straight to Long Island. Yes, and Thanksgiving with my in-laws. I can hardly wait to see you. Oh, you have a marvelous time, would you please? Oh, would you please give my best to uh, Lila then? I will. I'll make a point of it. As for you, Doctor, I just hope you have a very quiet and restful day with your family. That's exactly what I have in mind. I have to be here for a while just to make rounds, but fortunately I'm not on call. It's too bad you just can't get someone to do your rounds for you. I won't take that long. Hey, I don't want to keep you, please. I just oh. got to wait for Leslie. Oh. Can I uh, say something? Sure, what? Well, I know something's bothering you, Rick. Just know that whatever, whatever it is, I have faith that you will work it out. Thank you, Monica. I appreciate it more than I can say. I always get sentimental on holidays. Oh. Forgive me. Sure. I gotta run. Okay, bye. bye. Happy Thanksgiving, Rick. You too, Tracy.